We are about 10 minutes away from the game shutting down for the maintenance that we'll see the pearly pack come to the game. But before we do that, we're going to take a look at season 21 and Flawanderies in the meta. So as you can see here, I haven't actually played any matches. It's September the 7th pretty much. Uh, I've just been too busy. I was messing around at, in Master 1 last season with just some random decks, but now that Season 21 has started, we're going to go back to Flow Andre. So I'm going to break down the deck that I'm going to at least start with, and then we're going to take a look at the meta, and I might go over some additional options that you might want to play with Flow Andre's given some of the meta shifts. So this deck is pretty much what I used last season. We've got triple Robina, triple Eaglin, one Streets, two Tukin. I still like this ratio. I don't see any real reason to change it. Um, you could opt for two Stree, but Grave Shufflers are still going to be around. They're going to be played in more decks than just Tier Limits, uh, so they will disrupt the Stree, so keep that in mind. At least now, you're less of a chance of getting milled with only one Kelbeck, like you're, you're one of Stree, uh, and no Aguido now, so that's very beneficial. Moving on, the three Fossil Dyna is totally up to you. Um, we played this because Tier but obviously pretty much every deck in the meta is special summons. However, some of the more popular decks that might come up like Runic, uh, Naturia, um, don't really, like they, they care about Fossil Dyna, but they can easily out it, so to speak, right? So it won't be that effective against those kind of decks in the meta um, and Runic based strategies because Freezing Curses will just negate it. Um, and if they play Imperms and stuff like that on top of it uh, or Effect Veilers, etc., this card will have a hard time. That being said, um, things like Dragon Link can technically still out this right with the normal summon, but again, if you set it up the right way, you should be able to protect it, but you can't protect it against something like a Freezing Curses, so keep that in mind. Shifter still has a place in the meta, despite tier limits falling off. You can opt not to play this now, in my opinion. Again, I haven't actually played any of Season 21, so I'll give you some live reaction feedback once I play my matches, because as you guys know, I, I post pretty much every match I play in Ranked. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to do that this season as well. But the reason why you may not want to play Shifter is because we're expecting to see a lot of Kash Tira. Um, a lot of people are using those cards, just building the deck because it's a new deck, it's a fun deck, it's going to be a powerful deck later on in the meta. And that deck likes their cards banished and they don't care about Dimension Shifter. So that, with that in mind, you may not want to play it. However, the point I made earlier about Fossil Dyna, playing this against the Runic based strategies is, ex is extremely effective as well, especially when you go second. So you might still want to play Shifter, but if you wanted to try a different build of Flawandries, you could do that. We'll, we'll take a look at some different options that you can sub in. So you got five flex spots here, in my opinion. I think Shifter is more relevant than Fossil Dyna still, but again, it's you, you can get away with not playing these technically if you wanted to. For the Tribute Monsters, I've seen builds without Apex now, but I still think you want to play an Omni Negate if, if you can. Um, one Ryza or two, totally up to you. If you play two Ryza, you probably don't play Snowl. This card is pretty good against Kash Tira, um, but you can opt not to play it if you really want to. I like it because it's another Fluand Reasoné because again, Konami, one Empin, come on, give us at least two. But having another name to search off Advent or off of the Eaglin um, is, is helpful in some scenarios. Um, and the extra normal summons do help during your turn. And then the Book of Moon effect or Book of Eclipse effect during the opponent's turn obviously is, is really effective against special summon monsters. You still need to play your Gold Sark because you only have one map. Um, two duality and now two extravagance. Again, you guys can say that the deck got an another nerf, which technically I guess it did, but I can't tell you, well actually I can because you guys have seen it on my channel if you watch my videos, how many times you brick on like double part of extravagance. So I actually don't mind playing two um, and subbing out a third one for a jack in the hand. This card gives you an instant bird. Uh, so, you know, you, you obviously in, in my build, I would reveal Robina, Eaglin, and Toucan. I would not reveal the Stree, which is a one of. The opponent might opt to take the Toucan thinking it's a one of, or they take the Robina and I take the Eaglin or something, right? So there is that one of prosperity as well. One map, and I'm back up to double unexplored wins. Um, I don't remember what I took out for this, but, um, you know, it's, 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 it's good to play at two in my opinion, because you know, just being able to, to send your opponent's stuff is is pretty relevant. Um, you know, s there's just a lot of matchups where this can come in really clutch, I think, especially if you go first and, and you open this card. And I've talked about, you know, playing two of this is, is relevant for that fact. Uh, it's, it's just one of your power spells that help you control the game and out your opponent's cards um, 
or you know like like some of their key cards or interrupt their key combos during their turn which is which is really helpful you don't really use it for the put back and draw factor but hey now that you're not going to be locked under extravagance as much because you have one less copy this might come in handy to put back some cards right and draw draw additional cards um three book of eclipse i'm going to keep this in for now but i think dark ruler might have a stronger presence in the meta just because against cash tira um dark ruler pretty much does the same thing as book of eclipse um this is not or sorry dark ruler is not ashable but sometimes you actually do want to get ashed on book so that it baits out the opponent's negate sometimes you need this to resolve sometimes the dynamic ability to book your own card like you know if you watch my videos last season being able to book of eclipse with just my like robina on field to dodge an imperm or something is very useful you don't have that utility with dark ruler so each card has their benefits um, and their cons uh, the, obviously the biggest con of Book of Eclipse is it can be negated so if your opponent puts up like a big negate board with like Baron and all that stuff they can't Dark Ruler uh, sorry they can't negate the Dark Ruler right but they can negate the Book of Eclipse however with Ad Emancipator falling out of the meta now thanks to the Block Dragon ban thank you Konami that needed to go um, you might not run into those big huge Omni negate boards at least until Super Heavy Samurai comes to the game but they'll probably do something to nerf that deck because that deck is just Super heavy, I mean, uh, Ad Emancipator on steroids, pretty much. So again, totally up to you what you want to play. Um, they're both good, and I probably will end up testing both at some point. What I would say, though, is, um, you know, Dark Ruler helps deal with Link Monsters as well, whereas Book of Eclipse doesn't, so keep that in mind. Moving on, we're still playing the two Call by the Grave. And honestly, this card gets more utility if you don't play Shifter. Because again, if you Shifter and then your opponent Ash Blossoms, the Ash Blossom gets banished, you don't get the utility off of Shifter. So again, if you want to play both of these, they do conflict with each other to a certain degree. But again, if you can cut the Shifter, you can definitely get more utility out of Called By. Um, or if you keep Called By and you... Um, oh, sorry, if you want to cut Called By, you are more susceptible to Ash. But, you know, Flawandris has always been susceptible to Ash. So, you know, pick your poison, how you want to configure your deck. Not everything will work in perfect synergy with each other but uh like i like you if you watched my videos last season 85 percent win rate throughout all of season uh, 20 in diamond and in master which is absolutely crazy to think about in my opinion but we did it with a deck like this right so it does work um and you can definitely make it work triple admin of adventure of course triple evenly matched still this card was definitely an mvp for me last season and i don't see any reason why it would not be this season except well i guess i could see why because you know tier being huge in the meta still Tier didn't usually put up negates. I mean, sometimes they did with the Grapha, which would suck, and Baron with the Diviner. Um, and then, you know, it evenly gets negated. But generally, evenly matched will do a lot of work. So playing three copies, I think, is still pretty much warranted. Because again, you're a control deck. You don't need to go battle phase and go OTK turn two. You're setting up a control game. So evenly in the board, losing your battle phase isn't the biggest deal on turn two. And then of course, one Dreaming Town. Um, you can try to play two. Um, I don't. I wouldn't be against it, but given that you only have one Empin, I think one Dreaming Town is pretty much going to be decent enough for now. Uh, extra deck doesn't matter. Just play your Assemble Nightingale, your Downward Magician, and your Zeus. It probably will never come up. I do recommend you also play, um, if you have it, like a big Link 3 and an Access Code Talker. <clears throat> Just because if the opponent does summon a Towers monster, you want to have the ability to out it. And sometimes this does come up. But honestly, if you run into those kind of games, it's, you're better off just scooping because the amount of time it takes to win those. I, I've, I've, if you, again, if you watch my channel, you've seen me play up against tower monsters. It's usually just not worth the time investment. So that is the deck. That is what we're going to try for season 21. Um, again, stay tuned if you want to see the gameplay. Will we be as effective? Probably not because, um, yeah, the meta has shifted quite a bit. But let's go ahead and just take a look at one last thing before we switch over to taking a look at the meta. Uh, again, I did mess around a little bit at the end of uh, Season 20 and I lost some duels, but I think I still have a 70% win rate here. So again, this is pretty much using Flawanderies. I mean, in earlier seasons, I did like, you know, purposefully lose to stay in certain ranks and stuff. But I think my overall win rate with Flawanderies is pretty insane for more or less reaching max rank in the past, you know, five seasons or whatever. Um, so the deck is still effective is what I'm trying to say. Uh, I can you, know, you can still do work with it. It's still an effective deck. It probably will still be effective this season. Um, and this is proof, right? Again, if you watched all of my, my videos, if you've been following me from the past couple of seasons, you know, we've hit max rank uh, and we've been doing so with a pretty decent win rate with Flawandry. So don't think the deck is dead by any means. Um, I know I've called it dead maybe on one occasion when Empen got limited to one. And uh, 
you know, it still still survives somehow. It's, it's, it is a struggle though, so be prepared to uh, struggle a little bit, but it is still doable just because the deck um, is very, like, strangely enough, it's, it's very resilient. Uh, 